Hello, my name is Ali Manucherinia from Karolinska Institute, and the topic of today's presentation is Registries, Multiple Sclerosis, Gold Mines of Healthcare and Research. Evidence that forms the basis of our clinical decisions in MS often comes from two sources. As you probably already know, the highest level of evidence comes from the randomized control trials or systematic reviews and meta-analysis studies that, which combine and summarize the results of several randomized clinical trials. These studies are considered to offer the highest level of evidence to answer clinical questions. RCTs provide evidence on efficacy and safety and remain crucial for securing regulatory approval. Although RCTs offer the highest level of evidence, they are not completely flawless or ideal. In some situations, it might not even be feasible or even ethical to perform an RCT. In such situations, high-quality evidence can be generated from other data sources, such as data collected in the real-world clinical settings. These evidences can come from several sources, such as health administrative databases, cohort studies, and registries, which is the subject of today's presentation. So let's begin by describing a registry. What is a registry? What do we call a registry? In short, a registry is a database aimed at collecting individualized disease-specific data. Registries are aimed at improving the delivery of healthcare and also advance our knowledge of the disease by providing extra clinically relevant data on numerous aspects of the diseases. But what are the advantages of registries? While there is already a vast amount of data being collected daily in clinical settings through other sources. First of all, the routinely collected data as part of health administrative system lacks disease-specific details. For example, smoking an important and established risk factor causing significant worsening of physical disability in MS is rarely collected in any health administrative database. Because simply, these databases are not designed to collect data for a specific disease. Health administrative databases are focused on collecting general clinical data, as the name implies, for administrative purposes, such as billing or insurance claims, not for improving patients' quality of life or helping in the research. On the other hand, cohort studies are specifically designed to generate data for research questions. Hence, they rarely address any concern regarding quality of the care. Why registries while RCTs provide a less biased information, specifically when it comes to treatment or intervention efficacy? Despite providing the highest level of evidence, as I mentioned before, RCTs have some limitations. First of all, RCTs often have strict inclusion and exclusion criteria and a highly regulated conditions. In contrast, registries often aim to include virtually every patient regardless of their clinical or demographic or uh, socioeconomic characteristics. The strict RCT inclusions criteria often limits the generalizability of RCT's findings. Second, RCTs are costly and might not always be feasible to perform. Third, RCTs are focused on investigating treatment efficacy of a particular drug or intervention, not the delivery of the care. The main objective of an RCT is simply to find out whether the treatment or intervention works or whether the treatment or the intervention A is superior to treatment or intervention B. In addition, compared to RCTs, registries follow more patients, a significantly more heterogeneous group of patients, and for a substantially longer period of time than RCTs. This is a major advantage of registries over clinical trials. However, registries are not perfect, and like any other databases, they have their own limitations. Registries are costly to run, and they require active engagement from multiple stakeholders, from patients to doctors and even health authorities. This can be quite challenging. There are also some inherited biases in the data that is collected through registries, such as indication bias, which is due to lack of randomization in treatment allocation, selection bias, and attrition bias. Although with appropriate mitigation strategies, these effects can be minimized and somehow accurate conclusions can be extracted from the data, one needs to be cautious and be aware of such biases. Given the benefits of registries, it is not surprising that today there are around 19 registries collecting MS-specific data across Europe. 
These registries provide valuable information on approximately 700,000 MS patients. A wide range of demographic, clinical, and socioeconomic data are collected in these registries. This ranges from personal data and basic clinical characteristics of the disease, such as MS clinical phenotype that is collected in almost all the registries, to data on comorbid conditions such as depression and fatigue, which is collected in some. Now let's briefly look at some of the most well-known country-specific and multinational MS registries in the world. An example of a multinational MS registry is MS Base. MS Base started enrolling patients in 2003, and now 34 centers across the world contribute data to the register. Today, there are almost 62,000 patients with MS registered in MS Base. Offset is a French MS registry. It's officially started in 2010, but data in some centers have been collected since 1993. To date, 41 centers across France contribute data to the register, which now includes over 68,000 MS patients. Neurotrans data is another example of a country-specific MS registry. NTD was founded in 2008. It contains clinical and demographic data on over 25,000 MS patients from 78 centers in Germany. And last but not least, the Swedish MS register from my hometown, Stockholm, the Swedish MS register, or as we like to call it, SMS Reg, was started in 96. To date, all 60 neurology clinics across Sweden contribute data to the register. Participation is completely voluntary for both MS patients and neurologists, and the register almost covers more than 80% of all MS cases in country. SMS Reg is not only a great scientific platform for research, Nowadays, it is part of the routine clinical practice and management of patients with MS in Sweden. SMS Reg collects a variety of clinical and patient-reported outcomes. Some of the clinical outcomes include relapses, histories, imaging data such as number of new brain T2 lesions or number of new gadolinium-enhanced lesions, the EDS score, which is a measure of physical disability, time to conversion to secondary progressive MS in relapsing onset patients, and also treatment adverse effects. SMS-REC also collects a wide range of patient-reported outcomes, including measures of cognitive function, such as the simple digit modality test, the SDMT score, and measures of quality of life reported by the patients. These are examples of outcomes that are not normally collected in RCDs or health administrative databases. These outcome measures have given us an extraordinary opportunity to better understand the impact of MS on patients and the society. As I mentioned earlier, SMS Reg is now part of the routine clinical practice in Sweden, but how that happened? How does the registry help patients and doctors in their daily encounters? For a start, unlike the traditional paper or digital medical records, registry is designed to collect MS-specific data and information, and in return offers a graphical presentation of the patient's MS history. This not only saves valuable time in the clinics, it also reduces the chance of medical errors by providing all the necessary information at once. SMS Reg also provides a variety of decision aid tools with the ultimate aim of shared decision-making process in which neurologists and patients work together to decide about intervention based on clinical evidence and the patient-informed preferences. A recent systematic review found that majority of patients wish to be actively partner in their treatment decisions. For patients to be able to play a part in the decision-making process and for the neurologist to make the best decision based on evidence, a clear, easy to understand information about the condition and the treatment or support options is needed. Decision aid tools offered by the SMS Reg are used to inform patients and neurologists and help them think about the different options and to reach an informed preference. To date, SMS Reg has contributed data to over 100 scientific publications. The scope has ranged from epidemiology and genetics to neuroimmunology and treatment research. An expressed objective of SMS Reg from its very start was to provide real world evidence for the long term effectiveness of disease-modifying drugs in MS. Since 2006, Swedish MS patients prescribed newly licensed DMDs 
have been asked to participate in an open-label follow-up study in which the SMS rig has served as an electronic clinical report form. This has enabled a variety of studies as participating patients have also contributed DNA and serum samples and completed extensive lifestyle questionnaires. The unique Swedish national identification number, which is assigned to everyone born in or residing in Sweden, allows us to link the data collected in SMS RAC to a vast amount of health administrative data collected in Sweden, such as the National Patient Register, for example, to identify comorbid conditions or hospitalizations of the patients, or to the Swedish Social Insurance Agency to investigate how MS impacts patients' workability and working life. In summary, registers are databases that result from prospective observational cohort studies of patients who have particular disease. Registers are a key source of long-term real-world data on patient populations of interest collected at clinical centers that follow a standardized data collection format. Real-world sources of data such as registries follow more patients for a longer period than clinical trials. Endpoints reported in registry analysis may be different to those in clinical trials. These may be judged to be more appropriate, but one has to remember that bias is inherited in data obtained from registries. Different options for statistical approaches are available. Transparency and robust methodological reporting are important for critical appraisal of methods and accurate interpretation of results. Thank you very much for your attention.